All right, we got Matt joining me on the desk for a first look at sports. And of course, it's one of the biggest rivalries in the NSRBL. Final officially getting underway last night. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the Lloyd Minster Twins uh, looking for their sixth straight NSRBL title. Like I said, taking on the Border City Blue Jays, uh, looking for revenge after being swept in the finals a year ago. We'll pick it up in the bottom of the second. Twins up two to nothing. The bearded one, Dirk Trepto, with a bases loaded single up the middle. That brings in a pair of runs. The Twins in control right from the get go. Bottom three, more of the same. Steve Barber with a shot to right. That brings home Troy Winterhalt. Five nothing for the Twinkies. Chris Osmack on the hill for the Twins, getting Brett Levin swinging. That would be one of his four strikeouts on the night. Top of the seven, six nothing Twins. The Jays will break the goose egg. Levin's getting some revenge. Will cash in Scott Willis. Then Tanner Goulet at the dish. He will drive in another run as Ruben Baker rounds third and trots home. It was 6-2 to two at that point. Now with the bases loaded, Osmak getting the grounder to end the ball game. 6-2 Twins is the final, taking the one-game lead in this series. A complete game for number 23 with more from last night's tilt. We head back to the Legion ballpark to hear from Chris Osmak. Missed a little bit. Wasn't really hitting my spots as well as it was earlier in the game, but managed to work my way out of it. Thought I was making good pitches, but they just seemed to put the bat on the ball and bloop it over our infield. So huh, it happens. They're a great team. They got lots of hits. They hit the ball really well today, and they uh, they got some runs. We uh, they got some runs on errors, but they also got a lot of earned runs. So that was the difference in the ball game. It's five days of turning and burning, and when it's all said and done, the 2014 Canadian champion will be crowned. Kyle Gallagher in the CPCA panel tee up day number one of the finals. Yes, it is a beautiful day here at Halstead Downs. The track behind me is looking nicely groomed, and the action should get underway a little later tonight. It is day one of the Westridge GMC CPCA finals here in Lloydminster. And to discuss today's action, we've got the CPCA panel gathered. Directly to my left is Andrew Brethauer, Lloydminster source sports editor. Also, he has a weekly barrel to post every Thursday. And the man sitting next to him, you should recognize well, it is New Cab TV sports director Moses Weldu. Guys, thanks for being here. Awesome being here, man. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, biggest show of the year, last show of the year. Uh, heading into this event, just what has been the biggest surprise? Which driver surprised you the most this year? I think we have to stop talking about Chris Molly, the biggest driver I think since Calgary Stampede. He picked up his first show win in St. Wahlberg, then went right in and if you look at what he did in Turtleford, winning all day monies, even with the team that he didn't have, you know, he didn't get win with his point team, so he won with all three teams. I think this is a driver that you don't want in that final heat. If you have him in that dash on Sunday, this is going to be a guy that is going to win from any barrel. He has so much power coming out of that lead. This is this is not a guy that anyone wants in that final, and I really don't think this is going to be much of a race if Chris Molly gets in that final. Down. For me, I'm going to go with the guy who finished two or as a runner up to Mr. Molly, of course, Lane Bremner. One of the things that Lane Bremner did this year was actually get off to a good start. He's been known for being a little slow off the get go and actually, you know, taking his sweet time in order to actually get into the swing of things. This time around, awesome showing, first show in North Battleford. Kept going since, right now, third place, indicative of how he's been thus far. Very good, very consistent, and deserves a top four finish. And I mean, it should be a very good week because these standings are almost as tight as you can get. Only 25 points separate third place Lane Bremner from eighth place Dallas Dick. So, out of the drivers who are not in the top four now, which one do you think has the best chance to get into that top four for Sunday? I think I get the steal going first by picking Vern Nolan. I think you have to take Vern Nolan. The guy is just only 18 points out. And not only that, he's the defending two-time champion. How do you not pick the defending two-time champion to get into this into this final race? I think if he, anyone's going to make noise, it's going to be Vern. And I, I don't think he's going to beat Molly. I just said it earlier. I think he's going to knock someone out. Maybe Bremner, maybe Labakane, depending if he can get up there. But I think he's that's the guy I'd pick to go in the finals. I'm going with baby Labakane. I think Jamie is the guy to go with here. He's got the better outfits, especially on the outside barrels. I think he's very dangerous and is the guy to watch. I think he sneaks in and grabs a spot. Like you say, it's going to be tough. Lane Bremner might be on the outside looking in, but uh, I think Jamie is going to sneak in the top four, at least from the guys who are out on the outside looking in. All right, and a qu question I'm going to ask the panel members every day going into day one, who do you see winning day money? Got to give it to Chris Molly. You have to give it to him three times already from Turtleford. I think he's going for four. I think he could sweep it, but I'm going to say at least he's going to make it number four in a row and go for Chris Molly. Good golly, Chris Molly. I got to say, uh, the guy's been consistent. Uh, Andrew, you hit it nail on the head. 
is the guy to go with. I think he's uh, hot at the right time. And you saw his showings in the aggregates, but three fastest times all night or all uh, nights uh, in Turtleford. Even on the point unit too. Yeah, non-point outfits too, getting money. That's how dangerous this guy is. All right, well, I'm going to go off the, you know, off the beaten path a little bit. I'm going to say Dallas Dick actually wins day money tonight. He goes off the one barrel and heat seven, so I think he might be a surprise. But, uh, guys, thanks for joining me. We'll try to do this all week, get them all prepped for the race day. And, uh, yeah, the races start at 6.30 here at Halstead Downs. Should be some exciting action, and make sure to tune in to New Cap Sports for all the latest. Now that's your first look at sports. Gerard has your weather details coming up. The Lakeland College men's soccer team has had a lot to mull over after a last season's disappointment resulting in drop points and failing to make the playoffs. This time around, the team has renewed optimism and they feel they can be tops in the ACAC. Moses Boldu has more. Hope springs eternal for the Lakeland wrestlers as a new season approaches. We're looking for more, uh, for, for a core of our group to, to be back more experienced and to learn from uh, last year's mistakes. And it's that core that makes this team so dangerous this season 15 players return of the 21 who are at camp, all wanting to erase what happened last season, missing out on the playoffs. It's the most uh, athletic, most talented, most skillful team for sure. Yeah, and it helps that we have a lot, like 15 guys back. That's, I think, the most that we've ever had. So I, I think it's indicative of what the players' goals are and, and what we're trying, that they, that they believe in what we're trying to do at, at Lakeland Soccer. Buying into a system that has veterans excited for a new beginning. We're a little more hungry and wanting to learn different styles, the way we can play, we, we, the way we can change with the way we play, and uh, we're, we're excited about that. The wrestlers were named hosts of the ACAC Provincials, and head coach Kevin Wagner knows preparation, building a preseason schedule against quality opposition in hopes that his team will be battle ready. We were playing some CIS teams, um, competitive uh, CCAA teams and MCAA teams, so um, it's a matter of, uh, of us uh, playing better um, preseason competition. We've, we've looked at these games as uh, a learning opportunities to just to get better as a team and for not just myself, everyone to learn the system, learn the way we want to play. We're really itching. I mean, we want to prove that we, we deserve to host playoffs. Moses will do Newcap Sports. The wrestler soccer teams were also treated to some specialty coaching. Sean Fleming of the men's under-17 national team was brought in to provide some extra teaching this week and help the wrestlers fine-tune their game before the start of the season. The ladies and the men have been fantastic, very open to, uh, to taking some points here and there, and their attitude has been super, and I think that that will lead them to be successful in life. The ladies have enjoyed success on the global stage, most recently with the under-20s reaching the quarterfinals in this year's World Cup. The senior men's squad has been lacking, but with the recent changes to soccer development in the country, Fleming has seen improvements firsthand. Seeing these kids now from the last two groups, under-17s, have gone on to professional environments and are really uh, pushing for first-team places, signing first-team contracts. Uh, another boy just went over to Portugal from my last team in second division, so there's some bright spots for sure, but there's a lot of work to do.